couple, though, honestly. I don't try to wear flip flops, flip flops a lot. I feel like they, you know, mess with my feet, so I try to just wear shoes around the house. What you guys have been going up against, obviously, the, the receiving core um, pretty much every day. I wonder what your impressions of how they've, they've kind of grown as a group, and, and maybe Robert Woods in, in particular. Yeah, I mean, I've said from the beginning, Robert Woods has looked great. Uh, I guess I've been more impressed with, you know, Nick Westbrook, his progression. Uh, he's kind of, I mean, obviously, Kyle Phillips has been like Ryan's go-to receiver and two men in a lot of different situations. Um, obviously, Racy has emerged as a deep threat. Uh, but, like, I've just been in, impressed with a lot of the younger guys. And like you said, more often than not, just Kyle Phillips coming in as a rookie, uh, being a really good route runner, polished, and uh, giving guys a lot of trouble. Obviously, you've seen doing joint practices and things like that. So... I already knew who Robert Woods was when he came here, but like I said, impressed with Nick and Kyle and Racy and all these other guys. Safety. The TV room in the last week and a half, what's been your impression of some of those guys? Yeah, so, I mean, Ugo, I've trained with Ugo here in Nashville. We train over at Lipscomb with uh, our, our trainer, Jeremy Holt, uh, doing a lot of footwork stuff. So I know what kind of athlete he is. Uh, really good feet, good hands, smart DB. Obviously, he's played nickel. Uh, I think he was playing a little bit of safety there in Seattle as well. So he's a smart guy, so I know he'll fit right in with our group and what we do. Um, but like you said, man, you know, this is the NFL, man. We have injuries. You have different things like that. You know, certain guys have to move a lot of different positions. And uh, I think that's the benefit of our group, having a lot of versatile guys, rather if it's Imani being able to come down and play uh, a lot of different positions. Theo, who obviously plays some nickel and corner at, at Tennessee. So we have a lot of guys that can move around and be in, kind of interchangeable. You've been with guys like Tyree Gillespie, Lonnie Johnson Jr., Adrian Colbert. They came in, and it just seems like right away they're starting to make plays. Yeah, I mean, it's just the standard that we have in our room. It's like, you know, a new guy comes in, obviously you have to give him a couple of days to acclimate, uh, learn where, where the hot tub and cold tub and stuff is. But when they come in, they understand that once they go out there, you know, they're going to be treated as a one or as a starter when they're out there on the field. So, like you said, it's still going to be a learning curve because, like I've said this before, our defense is real complex, a lot of details, a lot of small things you really have to know. Um, but I've been impressed with just how well they've come in. And even they make mistakes, they respond. They don't make a lot of mistakes twice. So, like I said, I've been impressed with that for sure. Today, I guess the last day of camp, does, it, does anything change? I mean, does it feel like anything is going to be different? Yeah, I mean, obviously, I think, uh, you know, within the next coming days, you know, we'll be able to start locking in on the Giants. Uh, I mean, don't want to say too much, but I've been locking in on the Giants for a little bit now. Uh, watching film, obviously on my own, but also with some of the coaches just kind of just getting a head start, obviously watching some of their, uh, some of the series, obviously when the ones are out there during the preseason. So obviously I've been looking forward to being able to get ready for the season, you know, so, I mean, obviously this has been a really great training camp and I've been trying to make sure that I'm staying mentally locked in on each day, trying to just take training camp for what it is, but at the same time doing a little bit of peeking uh, at our opponent ahead. How about this defense as a whole, KB? How, how, how ready do you guys feel heading into the last preseason game? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I think that, you know, talking about previous years, I just think that a lot of the situations that Braves creates during practice, right, if it's, you know, we talk about, you know, being in a lot of two-minute situations and red zone 30% of each game. And he creates a lot of situations to put those in those positions during practice. Obviously, we do all our full field stuff, but we work a lot of those, those situations. I think just as a whole, as a defense, we're way ahead as far as just being knowledgeable of these situations, understanding, hey, if it's a certain amount of clock, that's, you know, if we're in a two-minute situation, it's only 12 seconds or eight seconds, and they don't have no timeouts, knowing that they may not be able to clock it, similar to the 49ers and Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs, but they couldn't clock it. So, and we watch those things every Friday. We watch it a lot. So I just think just as a whole, just the awareness of our defense has really improved. There's always going to be small things that we're going to have to tweak in as these news guys come in. But just as a whole, as a defense, I think we're really uh, learning – not necessarily just our defense, but just football as a whole. Our IQ is raised a lot. So I think it's going to help us not only early in the year, but later on as the season you know, goes on. A lot of guys. It's going to be the final opportunity for a lot of these guys to make that last impression on the coaching staff to stay here. As a veteran who knows he's going to be here, do you, do you enjoy watching these guys give that kind of effort in the final preseason game? No, absolutely. What do you, what do you tell these young guys? Yeah, no, preseason, um, especially, like you said, guys that you know may have just got here, guys that are still fighting for spots. And I tell them all the time, like, listen, hey, not only are you fighting to make this, this team, but you're trying to impress all 31 other teams around the league. So, you know, it's, it's not something that like, oh, it's the last game, thank God. But no, it's like this, you know, you can have the first two games, but this last game should be, some, should be a game where you're trying to put your best stuff on film. So, you know, I just tell them then go out there, relax, and just go out there and be you and make plays. I remember my rookie year, I think our last preseason game was against Miami. You know, I was, I was still out there that last preseason game. Caught a pick as well. I was catching punts, you know what I'm saying, my rookie year. But, 
you know, as the younger guys on the team, like, that's, you know, it's a big bonding thing, too. And as a veteran, I'm going to make sure that if I'm in the game or not, I, I don't know, but I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be out there rooting those guys on because I understand, you know, these next few days – it could be stressful, you know what I'm saying? You don't know where you stand. You don't know if you're going to get a call. So uh, just trying to be there for those guys and try to give them as much as knowledge and uh, just, just cheer them on as much as I can. Kevin, you've been in this league long enough to know that there's no guarantees with anything. You've gone 9-7 and seven and gone to the AFC Championship and 12-5 and five and 1-done. And 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 How much do you stress to the younger guys now that it has to happen this year because there, there's no guarantees for tomorrow? Yeah, I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I try for the young guys. I try not to put that much pressure on them, think they're like, hey, you know, as far as, you know, it can be, you know, at the end of the day, and I feel like I've learned this over the years, just having that gratitude every single day that you just never know when it could be your last snap, your last time that you can play ball. So try to take advantage of every opportunity. And I guess that's something that I would tell the young guys. Take advantage of every opportunity, no matter if it's a preseason game or if it's just a practice rep, if it's one-on-ones, whatever it may be, just take full advantage of every opportunity. And who knows if – who knows we're having the opportunity to, to – go to the playoffs or something like that. So obviously last year was behind us, but at the end of the day, this is a new year. Who knows if this team is obviously not going to be the same as it is going to be the years from now or whatever, or from last year. So teams are, teams are going to change. Who knows what's going to happen next year? So let's lock in on this year and play this year like it's, it's going to be our last. Everybody's last year. What kind of progress have you seen in the video, Kevin, since, uh, you know, off season and rookie camp and so forth? Yeah, I mean, he obviously had a little stint. Uh, you know, I think he was in the protocol or whatever, something like that, but – you know, just as a young player, and obviously, like I said, he played corner and nickel at, at, at UT, so he's been able to do a little bit of both here just during training camp. We had some injuries, so uh, I've been impressed with just how smart he is in the classroom. As complex as our defense is, he knows a lot. He's able to answer the right questions, and obviously, just going here trying to learn what we do. I've been impressed with just, you know, everything part of his game, whether it's man coverage, playing zone, because uh, like I said, for a young safety, being able to go out there and communicate, it, it's, it's, it's new for these guys, you know, because a lot of times in college, it's two by two, three by one, and you just line up and play ball. But we have so many checks and things like that in our defense. But I've been impressed with him, especially coming off of the protocol. He's been pretty much came right back in, and, you know, there's really no lag in his game or anything like that. KB, where have you seen Amani take strides from, from last year, and how, how do you maybe – uh, or I guess what are kind of your expectations for him coming off of, you know, his, his first year as a full-time starter? Yeah, my expectation for Amani is very high. I mean, I think he has the same expectations. Obviously, we both, you know, feel like as far as the secondary, we're, we're the leaders of the secondary, and we feel like every single day we got to bring, you know, bring that standard and make sure that we're holding guys accountable but holding ourselves accountable first. I think Amani has really tried to work on every part of his game. I know – uh, with something we talked about offseason, more than working his man coverage and things like that. Uh, and I think he's done that very well. Um, but like I said, I expect, you know, I don't want to put nothing on there. I want to put nothing out there to say, hey, you have to hold yourself to this or you have to go to Pro Bowl All Pro. But I know just by the conversations we've had in the locker room, you know, I'm expecting him, obviously with him, his contract being up at the end of this year, you know, I expect a great year for him, for him to be able to, you know, take that next step to be able to take care of his family, rather be here or whatever it may be. Obviously, I want to play with Imani as long as I can, but I told him that, like, hey, this, this is a contract year for you. Go out there and, and make those splash plays and, and make as many plays as you can so you can go out there and go get that bag. You know what I'm saying? The corners are obviously a young group out there. What do you think the strength is of that group? I mean, I think they all can cover. I think Christian can cover. I think Caleb can cover. Uh, Roger McCreary can cover. Um, Every guy that we thought there are pretty good cover guys. Even Greg Maven, who's been here, you know, has stints in and out of here. But I think we all can cover. So um, anytime you can have three good corners out there, regardless of who's out on the field first or who's not, um, that's always going to be a bonus, especially for guys at safety, um, that we can go out there and pretty much be freelancers, especially with the pass rush that we have. You know, this is a huge benefit for us. So uh, looking forward for those guys or looking forward to those guys being able to go out there and make as many plays and, and be sticky in coverage. I think that's one of the probably the – the main attributes of those guys, they're all sticky. Coach, uh, what did you guys see in Ugo to, to bring him over here and add to that, that, that position? Well, you get kind of in a pinch here when guys, you know, start going down and, um, you know, he's played in there. You know, he's got a good, you know, experience. I think that there's some physicality that shows up. He triggers in a run game. He's blitzed. So, you know, those are all things that, you know, as teams start to trend more towards you know, 11 personnel and playing with three wide receivers on the field, uh, you know, we have to make sure that we have enough of those guys that, that have played in there. Mike, obviously Saturday is going to be the last chance for a lot of guys to make an impression on you and the staff to try to stay here. Do you enjoy seeing that effort from those guys in that last preseason game? I know you're obviously going to be busy 
handling stuff, but uh, no, I mean, I always enjoy. Yeah, I mean, I of course, you know, I mean, I I want these guys that have started to improve and continue to improve over the course of our practices to go out there, and that's their opportunity to go play. Um, you know, we'll make corrections throughout the game, but you know that that's that's the opportunity for some of these guys to to go and you know be able to you know have have all the hard work pay off and 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 help themselves and and give them the best chance of uh, earning a earning a spot here or somewhere else. Now come to balance one on ones. You mentioned to Des, you've seen him try the same thing a, a lot of the time. Uh, how much would you like to see some variety from him, and can he help himself there? Yeah, I was just. Trying to find a way to win in the open field. Gillespie, what is behind like kind of stockpiling so many veteran guys? Like, what, what do you like in those guys? Well, they, they've all played, you know what I mean. And so again, we've had some guys go down. AJ's been unavailable, um, you know. And we've seen flashes from each of those guys. And so we've had in the history of, of being here. Some, for guys maybe not to stick somewhere else and and come and find a role on our football team for whatever reason, um, you know. So we'll give them every opportunity. You know, we just focus on. You know, we don't care how they get here. We just focus on what they do while they're here. And so, you know, we coach them up and see who improves in our in our system, uh, what contributions they can make, and, and help them to find a role for themselves on the team. I guess this is the last official day of camp, and what, what changes from a pro, maybe from a time standpoint focus standpoint moving forward? Well, I mean, I think we'll transition normally, try to transition back to to our regular season schedule, getting in here, meeting in the mornings, um, putting them through those meetings, starting a game plan, you know, starting to do that, and then practice, you know, around noon or whenever that may be, which is usually our in-season schedule, meet afterwards and then get them out. For Saturday or already? It's a little bit of both. It's a little bit of both. Numbers, results, or anything. What have you seen Malik improve on over the last two and a half weeks or so? Now that he's got a couple of games under his belt. Well, we, you know, we talked about, you know, there was times that, you know, we we never want him to be a, a sitting duck, but there's also a progression. Um, I, I've seen him work through his progression. I've seen him improve his timing, um, and, and then I've seen him, you know, being able to slide up in the pocket. You know, he hit Hassan when when he slid up, and then he slid up. And, and was able to attack the defense. And th- that's where you can, you can make a lot of damage, you know, in this league. And then if you go out, you know, the back of the pocket, you know, using numerous quarterbacks as an example, but Josh Allen's made a living, you know, going out and, and making plays um, out of the pocket and throwing the ball downfield and keeping his eyes downfield. But there's also a time to, to get in and, and break it down a defense and then make sure that you're – you know, protecting yourself and, and the equipment. How much has his footwork and throwing motion improved over the course of this camp from uh, going back to when you yeah, they, you know, I mean, they, you know, I mean, it's just a daily progression. It's the, all the individual drills that sometimes you see, you know, it it carry over and look just like, you know, we want it to look and he wants it to look. And and there's other times where, you know, some of those movements um, probably. May force a, an errant throw, a high ball, you know, one that you know lands short, they, and then the accuracy. So, there's been a lot of improvement, and we just are going to keep working, and you know, excited for for him on Saturday as well. In the, in the hurricane situation that Nick made the catch, he sprinted the ball back out. Then he and Robert were talking with the officials. What's the situation there in terms of? Saving time versus a, a K ball doesn't come into the game. K ball, K ball does not. You know, I mean, when you're kicking a field goal and the clock's running inside of, uh, you know, two minutes, they're not going to K ball it. They're not going to come in there because, you know, God love these guys, but they officiate for a reason. So the ball gets dropped and then they have to stop it. And the last thing that anybody wants is them stopping the clock in that situation to give one team an advantage or the other. Um, so those are all things that we're working and. You know, I had a conversation with the officials here. This is the situation that we're in. Uh, you know, they would only ask for a new ball, you know, if it, the clock is stopped. You know, it's it's hot out, and sometimes the ball gets sweaty. So we changed the ball when it was, you know, the clock was stopped. Um, but in that situation with the clock running, you know, they're they're going to use that ball that you know was in play. 
tell the Willis with that mobility, or even with Tannehill for that matter, you know, to be able to extend and go off schedule. You like to work on situations. Do you have to spend a lot of time just making sure that, you know, that is an organized thing that they there, do? There is part of that, you know, and that was something that, you know, really Cliff um, wanted to make sure that was going to happen, even in just seven on seven, that, you know, they're going to probably extend some plays. And, you know, it was good. Kyler extended the play, got out of the pocket. You know, we got two guys out of the back of the end zone which I could show the team, like, that's exactly what we want to do when a quarterback's out of the pocket. You know, you could, there's no illegal contact. Um, and we have to do more of that. We've got to build more of that in so that um, our defense can, can match. You know, if we're in zone, we're going to have to match guys that are in our zone, plaster. Um, receivers are going to have to show up where, you know, the quarterback and, and our offense or whatever the plan is, you know, you got guys showing up in different spots based on where the quarterback moves. So that's all good work. And sometimes, you know, if you're not getting enough of it, you, you can kind of build it in there and say, you know, hey, Ryan, like, you know, go one, two, and then, you know, go go get on the move or any of the other quarterbacks. But it has to benefit of your offense because Tannehill has the Right. I mean, it's that something that's to... going to come up. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, don't, don't leave the pocket just to leave the pocket. You know what I mean? But if there's an, a, a chance that something breaks down, as opposed to sitting in there and, you know, taking a sack, we would obviously, or throwing it away, you know, get out on the edge and see what's there, press the line of scrimmage, and make good decisions. When guys are running carded plays, you want them to kind of just get a sense and, and have football knowledge of what it means there as it's opposed a guideline. to running I've, I've always said that, you know, that the card is, is a guideline. You know, a lot of the, the calls are similar. I would like to use our own terminology when we can for – all three phases uh, when we're working off of a card and, and use it as a guideline and then go play football, you know, whatever the, the technique requires. I don't want anybody to be a, you know, a blocking dummy. And nobody's, you know, just going to give way to anybody because that's, I've seen too many guys improve um, in the course of my playing career, me specifically, and other guys that have gone on those carded teams and, you know, Improved, improved going against other players. Haskins had that. Haskins had that one run in the red zone where he had two chances to bounce outside, didn't. Made the first guy miss, and then finished the run through yep. two tacklers. What did that tell you about him? And well, that I think he right knows now? who he is. You know, he's not. He's not Derek. He's not going to be able to probably circle him up. Right? We give. You know, I mean, Derek has got the luxury of, of having a skill set where he. You know, we've seen him make those cuts up up inside. Um, and then we give him the ball. And so sometimes he, he breaks outside. And sometimes, um, you know, good things happen. But I think Hassan knows who he is and knows that I'm going to put my foot in the ground and I'm going to get downhill. Um, I'm going to find contact and I'm going to try to you know, run and, and push a pile. And there's going to be some dirty four and five yard runs. But those are, those are efficient runs. Derek said that he was on the plan, obviously, during training camp. You've had him out there in team period last couple of days. What have you seen from him? And he had an acceleration right there. It looked like normal Derek. Just how well is he coming along at this point? Yeah, I mean, I think he's on schedule. I think that he's into it. He's mentally into it. He uh, he wants to do whatever he can do to help the football team. Um, you know, I think Tory's going to have to have to realize he needs to, you know, get going when he's in front of him so he doesn't cause a backup on 440. <laughs>